Thanks for agreeing to speak to us today about what you're doing on the intersection of London and Murphy Road here in Sarnia and why you're doing it. I'm Corey Dillon and I'm here today with my partner Katie Horvath. A lot of people refer to you as the street preacher. What is your name and tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is George. I retired from Ontario Hydro. I spent 30 years there in, in uh, Douglas Point. Mostly, most people would recognize it Douglas Point, but it was Ontario Hydro. Bruce Power when he took over and uh, I re retired from GSA where I spent my last six years. How long have you been doing this for and how many hours a day do you spend out there? And when did you begin doing it? I began doing it August 15, uh, three years ago in 19, or 2016. <clears throat> I spend about two hours a day. I, was, uh, I, I believe that the Lord told me it is time to go. And where will I go? And he says, I will guide you with my eyes. And that's, so I started out and I went to under the Blue Water Bridge it was my first appearance. Then I went to Sarnia downtown. And then I went to London for, from a doctor's appointment. And then I went back to, I started coming back to Sarnia. But during that, during these times, I couldn't speak too, too long because my throat wasn't uh, prepared for. So what I done is I wait out on a week and then on, I think, I believe it was on Wednesdays when I uh, started going out the first two or three weeks. And then I went out twice a week until now I can do it uh, about better, at least two hours a day and sometimes better. So something that I personally wanted to understand um, was the motivation. Uh, you're out there um, speaking about the Bible verses on the corner of a very busy intersection. Um, so why did you choose that particular approach and what's the motivation behind that approach? The reason that I chose uh, that is because I believe that I was sent by the Lord to go and start preaching or protesting in Sarnia because of what is going on in Sarnia, and not only in Sarnia, but at the time I was doing Sarnia and London. And I also did Strathroy as I was coming home from London. Uh, I think that it was on Wednesdays I did Strathroy as well. But that, that only lasted for about uh, three months, two to three months. So what specifically are you hoping to accomplish and how can you measure if what you're doing is successful? What I hope to accomplish is to tell people about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I, I know that I only have about three seconds per vehicle that goes by that they're going to hear me. I don't, I don't believe that they're going to hear the full message when they go by or when they're waiting for the light to change. I just hope that they'll get enough to be convicted that they will start reading the Bible to find out if the things I'm saying are true. So is there a way to measure if, if you're having success in that approach? No. Okay. You used to use a megaphone. Um, now you're using a public service address system, a PA system. Some people are concerned that you're a public safety issue. Um, distracted driving, amplified noise. Um, have, is, is, what's your thoughts on that? Is, that is, is the location that you're at a concern to you or is that a strategic move to be there? I don't understand what a strategic move is. Uh, so are you there because that's a heavy, high traffic area? No, I'm there because I believe that's where the Lord sent me. Because I, I went to, to downtown Sarnia, I went down to the Blue Water Bridge, and I went to downtown Sarnia, and 
this is the place where I'm most comfortable. I did, I, I did also Mitten Street, Davis, De, Mitten and Davis. I did Mitten and Wellington, and I'm, this is where I'm most comfortable. Uh, um, and the follow-up to that question is: Some people consider you a safety hazard. Distract, you're distracting people. The noise. People have said you startled them. What do you think of that? It could very well be that I am, but I don't believe that. Uh, the simple reason that there's signs all over, there's all kinds of noises going on, all, it doesn't matter where you drive, and if a person really truly feels that they're being distracted by things that I'm saying, I would recommend that they take their driver's license down to the municipal office uh, or not the municipal office, the, uh, what do they call that building? Where they get your license? Ontario Service. Which? Ontario, Ontario Service. Service. They would take their license to Ontario Service and tell them that they cannot, due to the stress that they are encountering while driving, that they should hand in their driver's license and uh, tell them that they can't cope with this kind of uh, uh, noise going on throughout the streets. Um, so you become somewhat of a public figure in Sarnia. Um, you're in the public eye and thousands of people in the city see you regularly. When we announced that we were going to meet with you, some people came forward with allegations about um, speaking inappropriately. So um, I'm going to name a couple of the allegations and we're just looking for your response to those allegations. Um, the first one is uh, speaking offensively to unwed mothers and working mothers. Uh, they may very well have thought that I was speaking to them directly, but I don't believe that I'm uh, speaking directly to them. I do speak not against unwed mothers because I know that we, as human beings, need affection but this is not what my teaching is my teaching is i speak against all kinds of wickedness and the wickedness that i speak on is not uh, uh like unwed mothers or i, I speak I, I consider uh lying uh what what homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, fornication, I, they're all the same. They're a sin against God. Christ died for those sins and he put them away. He imputed his righteousness on us so that we can have life through him. Um, so there was another one about uh, people with tattoos um, are going to hell. Unbelievers. Unbelievers will be uh, cast into the lake of fire where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched because they had an opportunity to accept the fact that Christ died for our sins and they rejected it. That is the only sin that is we are being charged with today. We're not being charged with anything else. So it's not so much the tattoos, it's just the not acceptance of Christ. Is that what you're saying? or Yes. Okay. Um, has nothing, the last. To, has nothing to do with tattoos, has nothing to do with uh, uh, lying, stealing, or anything else. It's a rejection of the atonement that was made for us, and it's a free gift. It's not something that he's going to force on us. A gift is something that you accept or reject. If you reject it, it's your responsibility. If you accept it, it's your responsibility. It's not that no one else's. Um, so one of the last ones that came up um, was about speaking to children, um, telling them that Santa isn't real or that they're going to hell. Um, what's your response to speaking to children on the street? My, Me speaking to children on the street, telling them that there is no Santa Claus, you know, if I, when I do that, and I do, I'm not denying that I don't, and be, I do it because children are being taught by parents, like I was, that there's a Santa Claus, there's an Easter Bunny, there's 
fairy tales or fairy tooth fairies, fairy tales, and then they want they want you to believe those things, and then they laugh about it afterwards, and. Uh, then we come to an age where we find out these things aren't true. And then our attitude towards our parents are held, like we, we don't know whether to believe our parents anymore. And then this is what we have to come to an end of, of doing those things. We have to start learning to speak the truth. Not, not just to speak, to say, to have words come out of our, of our mouth. We have to consider what we're saying because that's a long-lasting effect on our children. We found that what you're, we found that what you're doing has brought up discussions surrounding concepts such as religious freedom, free, freedom of speech, free speech, and hate speech. Hate speech is abusive or threatening speech or writing that expresses prejudice against a particular group especially on the basis of race, religion, or sexual orientation. In Canada, most, most laws prohibit publishing or displaying material that expresses an intention to discriminate, incite hate, or disturb the overall peace of the citizens. There are people that believe that what you're doing crosses the line from freedom of expression and enters into hate speech. Have you ever given any thought into the legalities behind what you're doing? No. Is that anything that concerns you whatsoever? No. Has the police ever been involved in any of your encounters? Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, when police approached, when I was first approached by the police, was happened in Port Elgin, and a police officer asked me what I was doing. I told him that I was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he said to me, well, we have buildings for that. So then I had to learn how to respond to a police so they would not shut me up. And the way that I've, what I found that I had this, I had to use different words. And that is what I learned. And that is what I'm going to keep using because they cannot stop me from doing those things. So something else that sparked my interest personally um, and my motivation into doing this interview was that there's a motion coming up at the next Sarnia City Council meeting. Um, the motion that the councillor is bringing forth is that city staff investigate creating a bylaw that prohibits sound amplification or loud noises that could possibly distract drivers on municipal streets. He states that there is a significant danger to drivers and pedestrians at the corner of Murphy and London Road almost daily when an individual with an amplified speaker is talking, uh, sometimes yelling at drivers. He states, being one of the busiest corners of the city, it's a strategic place for individuals to advertise their message. Uh, many drivers have been startled, pedestrians have been ignored at crosswalks because drivers have been distracted by the amplified sounds. Uh, his stance is that we need to keep our citizens safe from these distractions and create a standard around what's acceptable or not for street side advertisements. So how do you respond to the fact that a motion is being brought forward to investigate creating a bylaw surrounding what you're doing? I believe that eventually, like when we, when you pass this bylaw, and I, I have full belief that you will, and when you do pass it, there is going to come more problems in Sarnia. Sarnia, just like London's, London has already passed a bylaw for not uh, to get two preachers off the road. Sarnia wants to get one off the road. And now London is going through more turmoil than they've ever gone before, and it's going to get worse for them. And when you take me off the street, you are going to find out that it's going to get worse for Sarnia. Can because it is ordained of the Lord for those things to happen because the wickedness of uh, man, the wickedness of man, is not going to cease because of laws. If it would, if it would, then we'd have a perfect society because every time they have to add more laws and more uh, legalizations and it's not for the benefit 
benefit of the country, first of all, we have to learn how to behave ourselves in public. And when, as long as we're not willing to behave ourselves properly in public, we cannot do what is right before God or ourselves. We become ashamed of ourselves, so we start making light of those things. Can I just follow up? Um, you stated that uh, when they passed it in London, there was turmoil that followed. Um, yes. What What was the turmoil that followed? In London? Yeah. Uh, the uh, well, we have we have two groups uh, uh, coming out of Hamilton. One is called the Yellow Jackets, and the other one is dressed in pink. And they the Yellow Jackets. I don't know what their what their what their real name is, but the Yellow Jackets allow people to do what is what is right and good. What they follow more on righteousness, but the pink ones want to destroy what is good and right and just. And these two groups have come up. They've been they've been there, but now they're getting more popular. George, you seem pretty confident that this bylaw will pass. Oh, definitely. Um, what happens to you if it does? Do you pack up, close up shop, and stay home, or what? What is it that that your next course of action will be? I don't know uh, what I'm going to do next, but I do know that uh, the Lord, what the Lord says, is to shake the dust off your feet and uh, move on. So if, if that's what uh, the Lord gives me when they pass that bylaw, see, I might just stand on the corner and show you that it is not the megaphone that you are uh, concerned about. It's the person who I represent is what is uh, distracting you, causing you to do the things that you are doing against me and you call yourselves Christian but you don't believe because you want to destroy the, the person who he the person who God sent and I believe I am sent of God to do it George that's all the questions we have for now um, appreciate your time is there anything you want to add I'm sorry is there anything you want to add that that before we end this uh, interview no, I believe I said everything that, according to your questions.